Again, we are back, uh, Johnny on the track here, and we are just graced for a wonderful episode um, today and this week. And I am just, I mean, I'm, I'm ecstatic for the guests we have. Um, so it's kind of been somewhat of a long time coming. Uh, we've been in, I've been in contact with this person for oh, like a couple weeks now. And, you know, some of the timing didn't work, the details, got to go through people. Um, but there is no better time than to have this guest on this week. Um, because who is he? Well, it's Tyler Mon, the spotter for the number five Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet, driven and operated by Kyle Larson, who, yeah, I mean, y'all know, he just won this week at Las Vegas last Sunday and um, yeah, I mean, this is going to drop the Saturday before the Phoenix race. So um, it'll be fresh stuff. And I, I mean, I, I can't wait to talk to him. This is his first cup series win was, uh, was last Sunday. And he's just going to tell me about, you know, the emotion behind it all and what it meant to him. Who's paid his dues. I mean, this guy um, has been around and he's, he's good. I mean, he's good. There's, there's no way around it. Um, and for him to finally get this first win, I'm happy for him. I can't wait to congratulate him. And uh, he seems like an awesome dude. So I'm, I'm super excited to just get to talk to him about, um, about his career so far and uh, the rest of the season moving forward. And we're going to play a game with him, um, which, <laughs> which is, it's going to be good. I, I think you guys will, will like what we have planned. Um, so before that though, uh, I just want to go over a couple things, um, that we've starting to do each week now, um, last week for daily fantasy, uh, via the Twitter jock podcast on uh, Twitter and then Johnny on the track on Instagram, make sure you follow, but on the Twitter, we talked about the names that you needed to grab, um, for DFS, for DraftKings, for FanDuel, whatever you're playing. Another great week. We won again. Um, we've got some good stuff. Make sure you're on the Twitter following us. I'll tweet my picks. Um, the Sunday, usually around 10 AM is when I tweet my picks. Um, and I'm sure we'll win again. I'm very confident. Um, it's going to be a little more difficult again, moving forward with sort of a set lineup of now the, um, most of the, uh, the big name drivers are more toward the front. Um, but I'm not worried. Uh, we'll, we'll get another win. And, uh, so again, make sure you're keeping track of that. And then from the um, gaming side of it all, uh, as you know, uh, I'm part of the Sony Pro Cup PlayStation uh, Series League. Um, went to, uh, they're going to the Roval this weekend. So that'll be fun. Um, and we'll have, uh, you know, updates on, on the results of that. And then last week um, was Martinsville. We raced Martinsville and uh, the 19 who, continues to win, got another win. So congratulations to, to him. Um, yeah. So again, um, I'm, I'm ready. We are now going to move forward and, and catch up with, uh, with Tyler, Tyler Mon again, the spotter for, um, Kyle Larson. And so now I will fast forward to that interview, which is going to be awesome. All right. And now we welcome our next guest to Johnny on the track. And we are super, super excited to have a guy who just won this week at Las Vegas. He is the spotter for the number five Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet driven by Kyle Larson. He's worked with JJ Yaley. He's worked with Austin Wayne self and Tyler. Hopefully I'm getting those names right. Um, but we are super excited to have him on. Again, he just won his first race this week at Vegas as a spotter, and we are super excited to have him on. Tyler, thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. It's uh, been a crazy week so far, um, but I'm glad to be on. Thank you very much. So, so let's talk about that. You are a winner in the Cup Series. You've obviously paid your dues. Tell me the emotions of what it felt like to get that first win. Uh, yeah, I mean, 
I guess throughout the race, you know, we started off really good. And then throughout the race, um, you know, you just waited the last 30 laps after a green flag stop, but um, you, you waited for a caution, just waited, you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, here comes the caution, here comes the caution. And um, I would say probably, uh, you know, the white flag, I thought, well, you know, this is, this is ours now, you know, whatever flag is next ends it. So, but uh, coming off turn four, it was huge for me and very emotional. Um, I think every spotter um, up on the roof came down to congratulate me, uh, you know, teared up a little bit. It was a huge win. I mean, it was just, uh, just with everything going on and me get, catching my big break and it was huge. I mean, this was just a uh, very emotional win and uh, something that I'll always remember. I can probably tell you every second of the race and everything that I'll always keep in. Yeah. So describe those like last 10 laps when you're, are, are you just like, damn, don't blow a freaking tire. Like what are you saying in your mind there? So I'm just, um, like I said, hopefully the caution's not coming out. Um, you know, just, nice and smooth hit your marks you know don't make any mistakes and I stay I I knew that I had to tell myself to stay calm and right. and that's exactly what I did I felt like and uh, just to keep him calm and everybody else calm and cliff and it was just a calm you know there the last 10 laps but there was things going in your head you know tire going down or caution coming out or something happening and um, because with Las Vegas you know if the watching the restarts this past week, you know, being part of them, they were just so crazy on restarts. Yeah. So if we had a late caution, um, not saying we couldn't go still win the race, but it would have made it way tougher than what we were. Yeah. Well, again, I, I'm, I'm so happy for you. Um, it seems like, you know, it's, it's something that obviously a spotter always dreams of and uh, to get that first one is awesome. So you got it with Kyle Larson and many would argue that Kyle is if not the most talented, a top three, just absolute, absolute pure talent in the race car. Um, this guy can win on dirt. He can win in street stock. I mean, he can win with anything. So tell me how this opportunity came to be for you and in the mindset of going in like, dang, I get to work with Kyle Larson. Are you kidding me? I get to spot for him. Tell him. So tell me how this, this whole opportunity for you came together. Um, so it was probably, uh, it was late, you know, in off season, probably January. I, um, got a phone call from Eddie DeHaunt that spots for Chase Elliott. And he, um, got a hold of me. It was on Monday night and he said, Hey, you're going to receive a phone call, um, tomorrow. Just keep your phone on you. So I didn't, you know, nothing kind of kept my mind hurt a little bit, but nothing was crazy. So I guess it was Tuesday the next day, about mid afternoon, I get a phone call, uh, sitting at my house and, um, Cliff Daniels called me and, um, he said, you know, this is Cliff Daniels from Hendrick Motorsports. you know, we're very interested. We listen to your audio. Um, we would like to maybe, you know, move forward. So just talking to him a little bit, he had, you know, he said, I'll let you know by Friday. So the waiting game then came to play like, okay, he didn't tell me I had it. They're interested in me, but what's the next step? So I waited, um, maybe a day or two, I guess, it, I guess it was Thursday. I might've waited Wednesday and then Thursday morning, he called me and uh, said, Hey man, um, can you come over to the shop? So I went over to the shop, um, sat down with him, talked to him for a good while, went over everything. And at the end, he asked me if I had, a, if he had, a, if I had any questions for him. And I just said, when do I start? You know, there was nothing. <laughs> he didn't give me the start thing. You know, I was just honest with him. I'm like, when do I start? And uh, he laughed and pulled out a contract out of his desk. So it was super cool. It was cool how it came. Um, and, yeah, I mean, and I would have never told, you know, if you would have told me late December that this would happen, I would have told you were crazy. And uh, with all of it came, it just came so quickly. It was late in the game. And I knew I had to get up to speed quick when they offered me the deal. That's awesome. And, and congratulations to get this opportunity again with a driver who possesses so much talent and, I'm watching you guys. I mean, you guys, I hope that you guys have a lot of success and I can see it in the team that, um, you know, if it all comes together, like it did last Sunday, uh, the results will come. And, and I'm excited to see both yourself and uh, the crew chief and Kyle uh, all come together like you did last Sunday. So I want to get more into the actual job aspect of what you do. So, you know, <laughs> it's not an easy job. And I, I want to ask, when you're spotting at a ginormous track like Daytona versus when you're spotting at a smaller track, let's say like Bristol in Martinsville, is it 
easier to spot at a short track or, you know, with a lot of bumping going on, it might be a little more difficult. What, tell me about that aspect of it all. Well, every, um, yeah, I could say short tracks a little bit easier. Um, going back to like Daytona, like you said, in Talladega, you play such a big role as a spotter more than what you not saying you're not playing a role with these short tracks because you are, but really this it's up to the spotter and you're kind of playing a chess game when you get to Daytona, you know, knowing when the runs are coming, what lines are working, what line right. to be in. Um, and, you know, the only thing Kyle is seeing is a car directly in front of him and that's all he knows. So what's going on up front, what's going on 10 car lengths back behind him, what they're trying to work up line lane. So it's definitely more involved, um, you know, more it could be harder, but uh, the biggest thing, you know, get back to like your question is it's kind of easier at a short track. Obviously, they do run it in there, bump and bang. Um, but you just you could see the track all at one time. You know, at Bristol, you're so far up, you can almost see that you could probably look straight and probably see out of peripheral just the whole track and Daytona and, you know, Talladega and some bigger tracks. You're looking through binoculars and trying to, so you only have that little, um, you know, just that little right there in front of you that you can see. So it's definitely harder to spot for a Daytona like super speedway. So let's go a little de deeper into that in, in the, in the job aspect. What is the mental and emotional side of it? Knowing that one, I guess, bad call by yourself or even the driver maybe does something that, that you didn't tell him that he could do, you know, with, with that knowing one bad spot could lead to the end of the race. What's the mental aspect of it? Cause we look right. Remember last year, true. I think it was true. X thought he was clear on chase race chase, over yeah. for both of them and they were racing for the lead. So tell me about the mental aspect of that. So it's definitely tough because you don't want to put your driver in that situation. Um, so throughout the whole race, just going through my thoughts is um, you know, in the beginning of the race, even all the way to halfway, you're kind of very conservative about your calls, what you're making, what you're clear, what you can see. Um, you know, when there's still a long way to go, it's kind of, I mean, even outside of 20 laps, I mean, 20 laps at, at Daytona or uh, even a mile and a half, that's still a long way. Yeah. So um, just mentally, you're just trying to you kind of stay on the um, conservative side a little bit. And then you kind of move over. Once you get inside, then you're making some bold calls like, you know, and there's some places where we go where it's tough to see. It's tough to see entering a corner and coming out of a corner, um, where they put us at, or where we're at in spotter stand. Um, but just you have to just stay confident. This is the biggest thing. You got to stay confident. Call, call what you see, um, and that's just how it is. And just make sure that what you're seeing is, you know, the you see that gap there. You see that hole there. You know, late in a run, um, it would have just you're making closer calls that you think well you think right. it is you know Daytona I had a couple of them close calls maybe some calls that I called that Kyle made on his own but uh, definitely some close ones uh, coming to the stage and uh, coming to the you know checker flag and stuff like that but you always just try to stay conservative as long as you can until you get inside 10 or you know five laps to go then you start calling making some bolder calls than what you think you would all race. So you talked about that some tracks are a little more difficult uh, to see things at. So tell me, I, I kind of have a, a, a guess in, in mind of what one track would be, but what do you think is like the devil's track for spotters? Okay, now. I dude, Pocono. I, I was gonna say it. I was literally, I was gonna, I was gonna say it's, it's got to be Pocono. Uh, Pocono is definitely the toughest by far, hands down. Pocono is the toughest. Um, that is getting so into funny. turn one, and a lot of a lot of guys use two spotters at Pocono. They put somebody down in turn one where they can see Pocono. Um, and Pocono, me being originally from Pennsylvania, is like my home track, and I like Pocono. I do really like going there, but it is the toughest place to spot, um, especially into one. Even off turn four, it kind of gets a little, but not like <laughs> turn one. Every spotter's looking out over top of each other. There's three, four wide spread out, trying to get into turn one, and you're like, well, you're, ho you're hoping you're calling the right thing, <laughs> you know, but yeah, Pocono by far. Hands that down. is so funny. That is, I, I mean, I was ready to say it, but I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to spoil it, but I can only imagine. Um, and then for, you know, for the listeners that don't know, um, and there's plenty, for instance, my parents that don't know what Pocono yeah. <laughs> is, um, I would say, so Pocono is just a giant, ginormous triangle. And, um, you know, 
it's it's not easy it's it's unlike any track right on the on the on the cup series and um so yeah i mean i can only imagine how difficult it is and that would to me i'm actually pretty close to pocono so i'm, I'm up uh northeast and the boston area okay. is where i'm doing yeah. it from um so pocono is only like a four and a half hour drive um so right. I, that's like a must-see race for me man i, I really want to check out pocono yeah, Pocono is it's a cool track. I mean, it's definitely cool to go to. Um, it, it's a good track to be at. It's hard to see, not if you know you're um, you go you got to be way up or have binoculars because when they go through the tunnel turn, you definitely um, it's hard to see from so far. But it's a unique track. It's a unique track to be on the schedule. Um, I'm a big fan that they move the you know the double header at Pocono. We only go there one weekend, which is cool. But there's two races, so um, that's really cool that they did that for Pocono. Yeah. So let's go back to Sunday. What do you think? And maybe it's not one thing, but if, if you could take one thing that you think allowed for success last Sunday, what would it be? What was the biggest aspect of you guys getting um, a, a result? I I think what it is. Um, what it comes down to is all the preparation that we have, even with me being involved with the spotter, um, the preparation that we go through, I've never been anything involved in something like this until this year, um, Hendrick, but Cliff Daniels leads a fabulous group. And uh, we had meeting after meeting after meetings, uh, probably about four or five meetings a week um, going into races and talking about post-race meetings and pre-race meetings and just media or um, sorry, meetings at the shop and stuff like that. So I feel like preparation uh, when we get there, everybody's on the same page. There's nobody off the page. And um, it's just like, for instance, uh, through the race, we about missed pit, or about missed pit road and we just, we all stuck together. It was just a thing. Okay. We got to regroup. We got back on pit road. We beat the two out of pit road and it helped. So preparation, that, that was a key for us. I think that's a key for us every single weekend and looking back through just not Sunday, um, getting the win, which is fantastic, but just moving on or moving back to every race we've been at, we've had a shot at running top yeah. five, if not winning the race. So just preparation has been huge, you know, for us and the team and we, we always stick together and it's just a, a great teamwork effort, nothing that I've ever been a part of. So that, that's what I'm going to take away. And I, I think that's what helped us succeed uh, with, you know, Kyle's talent, how good the car was, how everybody worked great. The pit crew was phenomenal. Um, so just, it all comes together, you know, plays and we had kind of had a dominant race, you know, leading 107 laps on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. And, so I talked to, um, I don't know, you, do you know Jeff Kerr? He worked, um, he was a pit crew member for Hendrick for a while. He worked with uh, JTG. Um, so I had him on the show a couple weeks ago and we just okay. talked, like, you know, it's hard to win in this series. I mean, it's, it's not, it's simply not easy. And with every little factor that comes into it, I mean, you can make a mistake. You can maybe make a second, but you better not have a third. And you better not have right. mistakes back to back, and and yep. that's what it comes down to, right? Hundred percent. That's and that's what it came down to Sunday. I mean, we um, we had one mistake, and mm -hmm. we knew we couldn't make another one. We regrouped, and that was the biggest thing. And I was so um, going back and looking at it and watching the race. And Kyle, being the experience that he is, how skilled he is, how talented he is, for him to make the call that he made, that he knew he wasn't going to make it, but not lose a ton of time. Um, you know, not lock him up trying to get there or or totally miss. wasn't going to make it, so he kept going. It kept us out in front of the two um, because it could have shut up different if the two would have got ahead of us, him trying to get to pit road and then us being behind the two and trying to work back around him. And um, it would have been tough for us. But we made a mistake. And um, But, yeah, you're right. This is – when you get to – on Sundays, this is the toughest group of guys to run against. I mean, and you see it. Um just through Xfinity drivers being so great in the Xfinity series. And it's a different ball game, you know, when you get to the cup level, it's, uh, you know, the, at the Xfinity series, you got 12 to 15 guys, you know, that are pretty decent. You probably got, I would say about eight guys that can have a shot at winning in the cup series. You've got about 15 to 20 guys that have a shot at winning every week. So um, it's definitely, definitely very, very tough come Sunday and you have to have everything lined up and everything pretty much almost has to go perfect for you to be in Victor Lane at the end of the day. 
So you, you mentioned um, the fact that, you know, 15, 20 guys, which is absolutely correct. I, I would maybe even 20, 23, 25 right. you could argue. So what do you think about, obviously you're right there watching it all. What do you think about the parody so far this season? I mean, we've seen Michael McDowell. We've seen obviously Byron and Bell are super talented, very talented. Correct. Guys. But I mean, it's, it's, you could see possibly 16, 17 different drivers winning a race before even the playoffs start. What do you think of all this? Yeah, it, it is. Uh, it's absolutely crazy. I and mean, we talked to, you know, buddy of mine the other day and we just talked about, you know, there obviously there's four races, four different, I mean, that's four. So right there, you already got four of them out of the way. And, yeah. um, you, you know, you don't plan on Daytona is Daytona. You don't plan um, Michael McDowell to go out there and win, but, he put, he always runs good at Super Speedways. Um, I'm really good friends with Drew Blickenstiffer, and he did a great job. I'm so happy for them guys that they won. Um, but it's just like, you know, they put their, you know, Bell put himself in a situation um, to go win, you know, with people having, you know, Chase Elliott, pretty much the dominant car, had his issues. Um, we had our issues. And so, you know, Bell was just um, there and won, which, you know, Bell is super talented, and, yeah. you know, it, which is cool to see him get there and, um, pull a victory off in the second race uh, with Gibbs. And then, yeah, you know, William Byron, he was so fast last week in Homestead. That's the guy we were be there to beat. And I think a huge part of that is adding Rudy to that combination with William being back in the truck series, you know, back then when they won championships together and moving him over there. And they've run very well so far. So, yes, back to that, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you you could easily see 16 drivers. I mean, you – you got, you know, guys that have not won yet. You got, you know, Denny, Kyle, Kevin, yeah. Logano. But you got so many guys easily, you know. You got 12 guys, 12 spots left in the chase that could easily be taken up. And, uh, you know, I, I would say McDowell probably don't want to see something like that. But <laughs> they have been running so good to keep themselves yeah. up the way they are. So, um, you know, it's just all about they're very well possibly could be more than 16 drivers come to, you know, that have won a race which would be kind of cool to me. I think that would Absolutely. be awesome. I think it'd be good for the sport to have 60. I mean, it would be phenomenal. You know, I, obviously we want to have the most wins out of the 16, but right. just hopefully, you know, that, that would be very cool. I'd be all about that actually. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you. I think from a fan's perspective, um, which uh, here I am, <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it'd be cool. I mean, you know, I, I, a lot of fans and diehard fans have that one driver they root for i'm not that way uh, i kind of had that growing up like when i was like eight and watching nascar like if it wasn't jeff gordon i was like you know this sucks but uh, yeah yeah when you get older you learn to appreciate um you know the sport for who it is and the drivers for what they do so i got one last question for you and then uh we're gonna move into the game and, and it it kind of segues into the game so okay. you've got to spend i don't know almost five hours, four, four plus hours of locked in, focused with your eyes, watching, you know, a car go around and, and you making calls and, and all this coming together. How do you stay focused? Um, I don't know. I mean, I really don't have a really good answer for you. It's just, you're there. And I think with everything going on, um, knowing, I will say from last year to this year, and I'm not taking any away anything away from these guys, but working with Kyle, watching him um, work traffic, watching him going around the racetrack is just, it makes you want to stay focused. You it's know what I mean? Just because man. you're, you're running, you're running so good. Um, you, you run, you're running up front. You have so much going on more. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, getting leaders coming and stuff like that. I mean, so it, it's definitely, um, it's different from this year to last year, I guess I should say. And I'm not taking anything because some guys do everything they can with the equipment they got. But um, yeah, man, just staying focused is just, it's just something that comes to it. You know, you, you obviously you don't get bored. You don't want to lose focus because you're at the end of the day, you're trying to put your car in Victor Lane and you have such a big um, play, you know, you're such a good big player in the game. So um, yeah, man, it's just, trying to stay focused the whole time. I mean, it's kind of, it's really not hard to lose focus. I mean, you just try to stay with him the whole time. And there was times, you know, last year that you could easily probably lose focus, but not now this year. It's all game on tunnel vision focus, looking, you know, make sure everything's good. And um, you probably worry about a lot more this year um, or with this deal, but everything has been 
fantastic working with Kyle this year. We've gelled so well, and it's our only our fourth race together, and we don't have a victory. And I'm sure there's more to come. And yes, sir. We just got to keep keep going with each other. And um, it's kind of you know I I've known Kyle um, before this, but never very right on you know i never spotted for him so mm-hmm. me getting the job two weeks for daytona was kind of pretty key and um and we worked so well together so staying focused definitely is a big thing and it's easy to do now for sure this year yeah uh, man it's it's impressive um like the job you do and and the job with the drivers do the crew chiefs all of it because you know i'll, I'll be honest i'm so I'm in a racing league um, on NASCAR heat. We play NASCAR heat on the, on the PlayStation, yeah. and we go 50%. So we do half the laps you guys do. And man, you know, sometimes you just like, all right, well, I'm getting a little hungry here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I mean, I, I think it, it, when I do it, like it trains my mind to, to keep focused. And uh, so, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, you can, it, I, there's I, I wouldn't say there's probably it's probably easy to lose focus sometimes i'm not saying that it's not but um because it's is such a long race as it is but you just with everything the laps kind of click when you're running good and you're up front the laps click off click off way faster than what you think the race would be I, i'm so. sure and and that's nice of you to say that but uh i'm actually usually not up front i'm, I'm middle <laughs> rear. <laughs> um, yeah but, but anywho, um, so I told you before we started that we're going to play a game and it is right up your alley. So we've played games with, uh, like I said, I had Jeff Kerr on the pit crew member. We did a game with him where it was up his alley called Can You Pit It? And so we we uh, showed him fictional characters, for instance, Shrek, Forrest Gump, and he had to tell us, you know, if they could be in the pits and why. Um, so we've done different different games oriented towards the guest. So you, right. since you are a spotter, I want to test your eyes. So, <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. We're going to be playing a good old-fashioned classic in Where's Waldo. No. <laughs> this Can is you good. Do it? I don't know. I'll try. All right, all right, all right. So let me uh, let me get it up here. Can you see that? Uh, this is your start at screen sharing. Oh, yeah, now I got it. All right. So, so this is going to be good. I'm excited to see this. So as you can see, I got up to level six. I could not pass. I couldn't find Waldo here in number six. But we're going to start with an easy one, all right? Okay. All right. Here we go. Can you see that? Uh, yeah, now I do. All right. Tell oh, me where man. Waldo is, Tyler. Come on. <laughs> this is going to be tough. <laughs> This looks like it should be easy. It, it they're going. Uh, oh, he's right here in the middle. He's uh, right here. Where the? Yep, 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 yep. That's it. All right. He's right there above the shed to the left. You got him. All right. So, so that was an easy one. <laughs> yep. Uh, hold on. Huh? Oh man. <laughs> well, well, hold on. No, I, I don't want to do this one because because like I couldn't even. I mean, this one was was tough. So hold on. Let me see what I can do here. Okay. Pause this. Stop the share here. Hold on. I gotta figure out how to back out of this. Let me get. Uh... Is that it? Hold on. Hold on. That's it. I found him. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> he, he got him. Hurt one for one. Got... Yeah, right. one for one. Let's do. Let's do this one. Now, this one is a little tougher, I'll be honest. <laughs> All right. Can you, can you find Waldo? This uh, is the last one. Because if you can do this, this is impressive. Oh, I can zoom in on the thing. Okay. Uh, that helps. That's not cheating, I don't think. No, 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 not cheating. I have 2020 vision, but on a little phone, it's kind of hard. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a countdown. We're gonna give you a minute. Oh man, now I'm going rushed. All right, stop watches live. Okay. Whew. 
Can you see my mouse, by the way? Yes, I can. Okay, all right. You're going to give me a hint? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I, no, 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 no. <laughs> I just, so, so when you see him, you just got to direct me if, uh, if you see him. And you got about 30 seconds left, Tyler. So. Oh, man. Does it show, show his whole shirt and everything or just his hat? No, no, this one's a tough one. <laughs> so he's not down below the castle and the bridge with the blue guys. That's not him. No, no that's not okay. him. Okay. Okay. Dang. I haven't played Where's Water in a long time, but that's all right. To... All right. We're at a minute. Well, 30 seconds. Come on. Dang. Hey, th this is going to help you, though, for Sunday. You gonna be, be oh like he's over. above he's above where they're getting hit with the rock he's above oh, top right roof yes yes yeah 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 all right not honestly, I'm gonna be pretty good I'm gonna I'm gonna be looking for Waldo at uh, Phoenix <laughs> oh, oh no <laughs> uh what you think of that man you like that yeah that was cool that was all right definitely, good. that was that good. was awesome so yeah so again we've tried to do um. I'm trying to do like for the guests to keep it interesting because, you know, you guys come on these podcasts and I'm sure anybody can ask you what it's like to be a spotter, what it's like to get your first win. We all can ask those questions. For sure. It's interesting yeah. as, as a fan to learn that stuff. Uh, I'm not, yep. not taking away from that, but you know, you got to give them something to remember. And so by doing these little games and orienting towards each, each fan um, or each, sorry, each guest, I think, uh, I think it goes a long way. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. No, that was definitely, it makes it fun. Even I do, I've done a ton of interviews this week. That was definitely one of the most fun ones, interesting ones. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. And uh, again, I appreciate you coming on. Um, I It's it's kind of been a long time coming. It's been a couple of weeks now, but I think the timing was perfect between us. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. 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 It worked out great. I'm, I'm, thanks for having me on. It's been, it was a blast. It was fun talking with you. Thank you, man. I, I really appreciate that. We're rooting for you. Um, tell Kyle, us guys in the Northeast, me and my roommates are big Larson fans and wish them awesome. for us. Um, we'll be watching will do. Phoenix and uh, big championship run. Hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully that's where we're headed. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Take care. Uh, all right, man. Thanks so much. Yeah.